Hello and welcome to RN Medical Lectures. Today we are going to discuss the difference between SIADH, that is syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone, and diabetes insipidus. I'm going to break it down very simply so that you can understand the difference between the two for your exams. Do watch this video till the end because there's an important tip for your exam at the end of the video. SIADH and diabetes insipidus, both of them have to do with a little hormone called ADH, that is antidiuretic hormone. In SIADH, there is increased antidiuretic hormone, while in the diabetes insipidus, there is decreased antidiuretic hormone. It can be either due to lack of ADH, that is central diabetes insipidus, or it can be due to failure of response of the renal tubules to ADH that is nephrogenic diabetes insipidus. In the nephrogenic diabetes insipidus, there is a normal level of ADH but the kidney tubules are unresponsive to it. Before going into detailed discussion of both this SIADH and diabetes insipidus, you need to know the concept of ADH release and its action. Then all the causes, features and treatment of both SIADH and diabetes insipidus will make complete sense. ADH called the antidiuretic hormone is produced by hypothalamus and secreted by posterior pituitary. It then goes to the renal tubules, exerts its action there and causes water retention. Just simply remember it as ADH aids the water. In SIADH, there is increased antidiuretic hormone, so there would be increased water. The body would retain water. As we all have already discussed that ADH adds the water, so there would be increased water. As a result of increased water, there would be dilutional hyponatremia. The sodium content would be less as compared to the free water retained. Decreased sodium would cause decreased plasma osmolality. While in the diabetes insipidus, there is decreased ADH. So the body cannot retain water, it would start losing water. So there would be decreased water. As a result, there would be increased sodium content because already the water content has been low. So increased sodium. As a result, increased plasma osmolality. Let's break them down one by one. We know then in SIADH there is increased ADH. So the body would retain water. So it will have less urine output that is concentrated urine. Due to increased body water, there would be dilutional hyponatremia and as a result decreased plasma osmolality. This hyponatremia would lead to cerebral edema, headache and seizures. How do you treat SIADH? Just opposite to the features of SIAD, it stop the fluids. The body already have much water, so stop the fluids. Demeclocycline. The function of demeclocycline is that it stops the action of ADH. So stop the ADH. There's already increased secretion of ADH. And give him sodium. The patient is hyponatremic. Give him sodium. While in the diabetes insipidus, there is decreased ADH. So the body cannot retain water, it starts losing water. There would be increased urinary output, that is diluted urine. To compensate for the water loss, the patient would feel thirsty and he would like to drink more water, so there would be intense thirst. And as the body have lost more water, so there would be increased sodium content, increased plasma osmolality. How do you treat him? Just opposite to the features of diabetes insipidus. This decreased fluid, so give him fluid, hydrate the patient. This decreased ADH, give him desmopressin. Desmopressin is an analog of ADH, give him desmopressin. And treat hypercalcemia. Why hypercalcemia? In the hypercalcemia features, when there is increased calcium concentration, so the renal tubules are unresponsive to ADH. So treat the underlying cause, treat hypercalcemia. Now, let's discuss the causes of SIADH and diabetes insipidus. In the diabetes insipidus, there is increased ADH. We have already known that ADH is released by 
secreted by hypothalamus and posterior pituitary so there would be something wrong with the hypothalamus and posterior pituitary which is causing a decreased level of ADH so it could be either due to pituitary tumor it could be due to either head trauma or inflammation or tumors of hypothalamus while in the SI ADH there is increased ADH so it could be due to stroke subarachnoid hemorrhage meningitis infections and lung carcinoma which is causing increased ADH level especially small cell lung carcinoma now a very important tip for your exams remember it has been asked multiple times ADH is released at a threshold of at a plasma osmolality of 280 mmol per kg this is called the osmotic threshold after this the ADH would be released and for the diagnosis of SI ADH you need the patient to be euvolemic with a low serum sodium less than 134 millimol per liter and high urinary sodium causing increased urine osmolality that is more than 100 millimol per kg but you must exclude the other causes of such features such as glucocorticoid deficiency hypothyroidism and diuretic therapy i hope you have liked the video consider subscribing our channel hit the bell icon so you would be notified when the next video is uploaded and please do watch our other videos as well